Instagram, I urge you to do so at Prime Real Estate Rick. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in residential or commercial real estate anywhere in the great state of Texas, but especially here in our lovely city of Houston, you can reach me directly on Instagram at Prime Real Estate Rick. As always, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here with you this evening, just like it is every Monday night around this time. I want to welcome you to the show. On the Monday Night Live Real Estate Call-In Show, my co-host and I will answer questions from not only buyers, sellers, but also investors and property owners all alike. So I want to thank everyone in the audience for taking some time to check us out this Monday evening. I want to take some time right now to introduce my co-host. He's not only a successful real estate broker. He is not, uh, not only a great real estate consultant and educator. He is love around our office. And I would like to introduce to the audience, the co-founder of Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm. I want to thank him for checking us out and being here with us this Monday night, just like he is every week. Mr. Michael G. Davis. How you doing, Coach Mike? What's going on, Rick? Yes, uh -huh. Monday. Monday live. Man, I'm excited to be here, man, for another one, brother. How are you doing? Hey, man, you know, it's great, man. It's, I just love doing this particular show with you on Monday nights, man. It has a great following that's starting to build on Facebook and Instagram. And I want to give a big shout out to everyone who's checking us out on Facebook Live. I want to give a big shout out to everybody who's checking out on Instagram Live. And I want to give a big shout out to everyone who checks us out on YouTube. And I want to invite everyone in our audience, record yourself asking myself or Coach Mike a pertinent real estate question and submit it to the Monday Night Live text line. Submit your questions right now to the number you see on your screen. Our staff will review your questions and maybe, just maybe, Coach Mike will have an opportunity to answer your question live on the show. Man, Coach Mike, it's been a busy week, I know, man, but what's going on in your world and in the world of Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm? Man, just hum humongous things, man. Just expansion all across the board. You know, we just opened up our two new locations. We have our west location, our north location. So now we're three locations strong. Uh, that officially drops October 1. So super excited about that. Uh, we just launched a, a premier partnership uh, with the group last week, AF AFN Legacy Home Team. Uh, it's a, a mortgage company out of Atlanta that uh, wants to enhance their footprint here in Houston, offers a lot of resources, a lot of tools. They're partnering with us. And we launched that that new partnership at Maggiano's last week, uh, had a packed house. Everybody was able to get to know about the resources and what, what was in store. So, uh, you know, just really staying busy and growing, brother, looking to grow and expand. Uh, that's the season that we're in right now, man. Growth and expansion. No, absolutely, man. Growth, expansion, and building on this great show that we've been hosting here on Monday nights. Man, I've been getting such positive feedback from not only the people who've been getting their questions answered, but also members of the audience who didn't even know that these were some of the things that were on their mind. And we've been answering questions and getting some things resolved for people that they didn't even know would be a challenge. So mm -hmm. I just want to let you know from some of the people that follow me on Instagram, some of the messages that I've gotten directly. They want to thank you for everything that you've been doing as far as getting this knowledge out here and answering some of these questions, Coach. Hey, man, the pleasure is all mine. I see it as a as a way to give back a, a level of service. Uh, I think it's, it's great that we're recording these as well, man. So people can always go back. And revisit, especially brand new agents, man. This is a great resource that we're creating. They can constantly come back and, and just get an idea of the basics mm -hmm. of real estate, man. It's, it's just great. You know, um, one of the cool things about this is just the direct response that we've been getting live on the show from everyone in our chat rooms and comment section. So I want to invite everyone who's checking us out live on the Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm Facebook page. Take advantage of the opportunity to ask your questions in the comment section right now. The best questions, and we promise if you haven't seen any of the past episodes, Coach Mike and I definitely answer questions directly from the chat room and in the comment section. So get involved. Leave those questions out here. And then the ones that are especially moving for Coach Mike and myself, man, we'll definitely touch on live on the show. 
Absolutely. Shout out to a couple of people in the room. Shout out to one of our affiliate members, Ms. Tamiko Warren. Uh, excited to have her here, as well as Rodisha Hopkins, one of our former Brooks and Davis agents. So we already got people chiming in and giving us comments. So let's keep it going. Hey, man, Coach, you know, man, uh, there's we have some really exciting and really thought-provoking questions lined up for you this week, sir. So if you're ready to get it going, baby, we can get hey, to question number one. I'm ready, man. Let's see what the people got for me today. Absolutely. Let's get to question number one. This is Ashley in Humble, Texas, and I have a question for Coach Mike. I have two Section 8 clients who is looking to relocate from Chicago to Houston, and I wanted to know how does that process work? It's the same as leasing. Um, yeah, same leasing or renting. Section eight. So she got two Section eight clients relocating. Is mm -hmm. is that process the same? Well, and you know, my my initial response with that, Rick, is is that yeah, in essence, it really is the same. Um, there's this one caveat though. The caveat is, is that in most of the time when a person is applying for a rental home, uh, there's a couple of things that the landlord is concerned about, right? In any landlord, this is what he's concerned about. Can you afford it? Meaning, am I going to get my money? And are you going to tear the house up? That's typically what the landlords care about. Mm -hmm. Well, with the Section 8 situation, that deals with one of those, uh, one of those uh, concerns. Because Section 8 is saying, we're on the hook, we're going to pay it. Now, it comes in different facets, right? Because uh, depending on the person's, the, the individual's situation determines the percentage of how much Section 8 is going to pay or uh, versus how much that client would have to pay. But there is some guaranteed money that's going to come when you're dealing with somebody that has a voucher, has a Section 8 voucher. So... That that section eight deals with with one of those concerns. Now, when a person is applying for a rental to verify that they can afford it, they use they utilize their check stubs. Right. That's how they show. Hey, I can I can afford it. This is how much I pay. And most people, most rent, most landlords or, or property management companies, they're looking three times the rent. So if the rent's fifteen hundred then they need to see you making 4500 a month in your income. All right? Well, what makes it different with Section 8 is instead of you presenting your check stubs, you're going to present that housing voucher or that choice voucher is what they call it. You're going to present that to the landlord. And that's going to show the landlord, hey, Section 8 is covering the rent. This is what's going to handle that part of it. You don't necessarily need to see my check stubs. So, that's pretty much the biggest difference. Everything else is the same, right? They still section eight. They still have to pay a deposit. Uh, they're still going to get a, a criminal background done, right? Uh, credit. They're still going to want to look at credit, see if you had any evictions, anything like that. But because section eight is the one that's on the hook for it, a lot of it are those concerns. It really don't matter. Like if you got bad credit, you, your credit's bad because you're not paying your, your stuff on time where well, it don't matter because section eight paying it. Um, you got evictions because you're not paying the landlord where well, it don't matter because Section 8 paying. Right. Um, but if you got some criminal situations or a criminal background or felonies and things like that, domestic abuse or violence, that kind of stuff, then even if you're on Section 8, that might kick you out or, or, or get you not accepted. We'll say that. That may get you not accepted. But for the most part, uh, the situation is very similar. Um, other than that, just that, that one caveat that we spoke of as far as the voucher. And um, I would just add that if um, if I were in that same position, I would try to do a lot of the footwork ahead of time. Kind of like you said, get the file put together, coach, mm -hmm. get the award letter, get all the pertinent information, um, credit reports, background checks and have that in a file. Mm -hmm. Find properties that are open to Section 8 and then you can market your client's file to the particular owners have an idea of which owners is most interested in your client and only present those properties that you've already been greenlit because you've reached out to the owner or the owner's representative ahead of time. The type of thing is you don't want to get caught um, reaching out to owners or owner's reps before they have an idea of what your clients bring to the table as far as qualifications. No, I think that's a, I think that's a great way to approach it, Rick. 
Um, it, what it does is it shows that landlord that you're serious. And guess what, Rick? That that um that approach may work with people that are not say Section A landlords. People that you know they're kind of on the fence because not unfortunately not everybody is comfortable renting to a person that's on Section Eight because of maybe the negative uh, I guess connotation that comes with with it. Uh, and it's not right. It's not fair uh, that that prejudging that people have when they're on the Section Eight program. Like I've been doing real estate for close to twenty years. Uh, I've had my fair share of working with people that are on Section Eight, uh, and the rap that they get is not warranted. Like most people that are utilizing that program are nice people. They're 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 uh, they're responsible people. Uh, they're just using utilizing that program for whatever reason. So, but based on what you just said, Rick, may get some other opportunities for people that are on section eight, get landlords to be more open to utilizing the program that the person may not have necessarily gotten without you approaching it that way, being organized with the packet, being professional, you know, presenting that section eight client in a different light uh, to that landlord. No, because I absolutely agree because what you're illustrating is just the perceived risk that comes with someone who's taking advantage of that program. So like I was mentioning before, I think sometimes with there being a perceived risk that can all be alleviated with communication, being transparent, making commitments and letting everyone know exactly what it is you're trying to get done. And if we can get all those things lined up, I just want everyone to know it's not as challenging to find quality homes for people in those type of situations. So um, it's just stay vigilant and do a lot of your leg work ahead of time. Yeah, absolutely. Great, great, great. Hey, man, right, that was man. outstanding, Hope man. Now we're going to get to question two. Coach Mike, if you ready. Hey, man, I'm ready to go. If we ain't got nobody if we ain't got nobody in the comments in the DM, got questions for us, man. Let's see what, uh, what our next call-in question is. Okay, let's check out question two. Hey, Coach Mike, this is Marvin off of 288. I have a potential client that is interested in purchasing, but they're in Chapter 7 bankruptcy. How would you help them? Ooh, <laughs> interesting. Interesting. No doubt. Interesting. So they're in, they're in Chapter 7 bankruptcy, but they want to purchase a home. Mm -hmm. Hmm. All right. So obviously we would need more context to their situation. Because a lot of it has to do with each individual uh, and their individual situation. Right? All right. So without knowing additional background, right? So let me. So I started by saying this: since it, it, since it's not a it's not something that you could paint with a broad brush, the first thing you got to do is that you got to ask more questions. Right. right. If you get a client that comes to you and say, "Hey, I want to purchase a home, but I'm in Chapter Seven bankruptcy. Can you help me?" Then you immediately got to go into asking additional questions. Like, how long have you been in Chapter 7? Do you have any real estate that's in Chapter 7? You know, um, would you be okay with me having a conversation with your bankruptcy attorney or utilize the bankruptcy attorney, right? So you got to have these additional questions to lead into it to really help answer the question of if you can help or not, all right? Now, mo under most situations... The, if you're going to go conventional lending, then there are limits on on how long you on how long you have to be out of bankruptcy before you can purchase. There are those limits. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with FHA. You know, there are certain it's got to be this certain amount of time that you're out of bankruptcy, regardless of what your credit score is, regardless of the amount of money that you have. This is the amount of time that you have to be out of bankruptcy before you can purchase another home, right? So another thing that I would do is, is that I would try to identify what those guidelines are based on the kind of loan product that that person would want to go in purchasing a home, right? I would, you know, that's another way and something else that I would look at. Also, you want to look at, you know, hey, you're in chapter seven bankruptcy. That means that your credit got it took a hit it had to take a hit mm -hmm. you know because people on people going bankruptcy when they can't pay their debts and right. usually when you can't pay your debts you 30 days 60 day 90 day late it's gonna take a your, your credit's gonna get pinged mm -hmm. well you gotta ask that person okay so when's the last time you looked at your credit score 
right? Because you may be thinking, oh, it's been two, three, four years since the bankruptcy, but you haven't, that person hasn't done anything to begin to rebuild their score, rebuild their credit based right. off of the impact that the bankruptcy had. So you may be outside of those guidelines. Like you may be past that four year uh, uh, guideline that, 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 that conventional lender or that FHA lender may put on place. So you may be past that four years, but you didn't do it. You haven't done anything to rebuild your score coming fresh out of the bankruptcy. So right. those are really the two things that would pretty much hold a person back would be if, if they not being out of the bankruptcy long enough or they're not, they haven't addressed the impact that the bankruptcy has caused as it related to their credit, right? Right. Now, you know, I think she, I think a part of her question was the person was in bankruptcy. Can we help them buy a house? I don't really know if you can purchase a home while you're still in bankruptcy. I don't know if there are any underwriters or any lenders that would allow that while a person's in bankruptcy. But I do know well, a lot of people feel like once you go through bankruptcy, it's the end of the world, like you can't do nothing else. And I want people to understand that that's not the case. There is life after bankruptcy. <laughs> absolutely. Life just, after bankruptcy, life after foreclosure. Absolutely. You just got to understand how to approach it. Absolutely, man. I mean, that was a um, great answer because there's so many times that we meet people who've gone through financial um, trials, financial roadblocks, financial tribulations, and they feel like there is no way back for them. And I think what you're trying to illustrate for the audience is you can only know through education, transparency, being open and upfront with your real estate professional so that they can ask you the right questions so that they can involve the right people on the team to get you where you want to be. And that's the most important thing. And like Coach Mike said, it's not just for those who have suffered through bankruptcy, but also foreclosure. Yeah. Reach out to a real estate professional. Let them know what you've gone through. Let them know what challenges you've made your way past. And with not only their expertise, but the assistance of other like-minded real estate professionals, I don't think there are very many challenges that we can't get past as a team. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. Tap into your real estate professional because these resources, a lot of this insights that we offer, um, a good real estate agent is connected to a good broker. So even if it's above their, uh, their knowledge base, they'll be able to tap into someone. They're able to tap into someone that has a greater knowledge base that could assist. Uh, and even like myself, you know, I don't, I don't subscribe to knowing everything. Yeah, I know a lot. I've been doing this a, a while, but there are many situations that I run into. I don't know the answer. And I got to tap into my own team to try to get some additional insight on how to answer the question. Hey, coach, man, you asked the, the viewers in the audience for something great in the comment section and they have delivered. They delivered? Absolutely, oh, man. man. Uh, big shout for? out. Big shout out to Miss Hopkins, man. Um, her question is, Coach Mike, how do you help a client looking for a rental to use as an Airbnb or corporate housing? Ah, oh, okay. That's a good question. Great question. So, you know, I would, okay, so if I have a client and I, I'm assuming what Miss Hopkins is saying, she has a client that wants to maybe purchase, but I know some people are actually like, subletting themselves in a contractual agreement a right. lease agreement and then they're leasing it out like an airbnb or they're leasing it out uh as it relates to corporate housing so it may not even necessarily be a purchase right um, i think the i think the biggest thing with that is is getting the sign off with whoever the landlord whoever the apartment complex is that that you do it and here's the reality some people, they don't ask. It's like they do it and then they'll apologize later if they get caught. Well, I feel like if you're going to run a business, which is what that is, Airbnb, corporate housing, that's a business. If you're going to run a business, then you need to have the comfort to be able to approach it the way uh, uh, from a professional standpoint. Right. You shouldn't have to be having to go duck corners, go around here, do this. Like everything needs to be transparent on the up and up. 
to really position yourself to have the level of success with the business that you're trying to run. So with that being the case, you need to find a, a, an apartment complex or you need to find a condominium complex or an owner that is in agreement with you doing that. Right. right. Uh, and the reality is, is that if you can if you can show that owner or that complex that you're competent. So if your client is competent as it relates to their understanding of Airbnb and how they're going to execute it, right. their understanding of corporate housing and how they're going to execute it. If they can uh, if they can show that landlord or that person, then I feel like they have a great chance of that landlord signing off on it. Because remember. What do the landlords care about? What do the apartment complex care about? Are you going to pay? Are you going to tear the unit up? Right? right. So if you can present to those individuals, hey, I got we got the money. Money's covered. This is what we're going to be doing it. Mm-hmm. I'll guarantee it. Right? Even if the client can guarantee it, mm-hmm. this is what we're going to be doing. So if, if, if they don't pay, I'm paying. I can afford it. And then, you know, these are the stipulations that we're going to have in place to ensure that the, the property doesn't get damaged and if it does i'm going to be on i'm going to be on the hook or this is the rental insurance we're having place and i think it would be a great approach what you mentioned earlier like with the section eight to create a packet for the client showing their competence showing the measures that they're going to put in place the parameters that they're going to have and then begin to shop that pot that that packet to the particular options uh to be able to present to that client and help that client out you know, um, that's one of the things that as far as preparing client files that I found just in my general practice serves to be something that's been very beneficial um, because you want to be able to illustrate and show landlords, property owners, property management companies. You want to show your client in a three dimensional form. Mm-hmm. You don't want them to just be an application. You want to show that they're a human being with goals, um, a business acumen, organizational skills. And I think that way um, you can type, like we say, alleviate some of that perceived risk. Because when you're on that side of the table, all you can think about is all the negative things that could come from trying to make a profit. And on the side of the table that we're on, we're trying to illustrate why that risk isn't what you think it is. So. Absolutely. I would I would definitely agree with your advice. And once again, um, what do they say, Coach Mike? Uh, an ounce of preparation is worth a pound of cure or something like that. So, uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Now, I definitely yeah. know where you're going with that statement. But, I don't know. Um, I heard that somewhere. I don't even know if it's right. I might have butchered that thing. So, <laughs> Hey, but, but look, we know, we know where you was trying to get to. You know, really <laughs> trying stuff, to get to. You uh, know, man, but, it is. Go ahead, but, coach. Uh, but I was just going to say, just to kind of piggyback a little bit more about what you're talking about is, is that a lot of these ideas that we're ta- that we're that we're presenting, um, whether you talk about the, the 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 housing, whether you talk about the Airbnb or the corporate housing uh, or the Section Eight, you know, all we're saying do is offer them options because they may just have narrowed in on this one mindset, this one judgment. And whether they agree with you, whether they accept it, the the information or the alternatives that you provided, we're saying just offer alternatives that they probably never took the time to really think about. They Mm -hmm. never really opened up their mind to consider that it's probably not as bad as they think it is. And the reason they think it's they think it's as bad as the reason they think that is because nobody ever took the time to present them alternatives that would in essence contradict their original thought process or their original mindset around it. And then also, and I'd like to add that a lot of, especially in our real estate field, a lot of the clients and or consumers at first in the process, they think they're interested in choices. Mm -hmm. But as you go through the process, you come to realize through education that they're more interested in positive outcomes. Right. Absolutely. So what so what I try to provide with my clients are multiple options that are all can be positive outcomes. These are all of the opportunities that we have to get done what you want to get done. We've reached out to them. They like what we're offering. The question is, do we like what they have? And I think at that point, if you can move your client down that type of path to get to their ultimate goal, 
I think a lot of the sales professionals, especially in the real estate sector, will see that their professional um, life and their their client experience will start to become a lot more positive over time. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, man, Coach, man, you know, it's, it's just it's so therapeutic for me personally doing this show with you because it's opened my eyes up to so many subjects that I might not I might not have thought about recently. Yeah. And it gives me a chance to go back in my real estate past and just bring up some of those memories of some of the great people I've helped in some of the more challenging transactions. Mm-hmm. So so like what type of um, what what type of experiences do you call upon coach mike when you're answering these questions i mean i just been i've been doing this for a long time rick man i got mm-hmm. my real estate license in 2004 brother 2004 mm-hmm. man <laughs> it's a long time ago man long time ago <laughs> man things have things have changed dramatically yeah. uh since i've you know gotten my real estate license um it's not many people that can say that they've been in it, one thing almost 20 years and you know right. and to be in in real estate this long so uh to be real candid with you rick in that time frame uh, especially being a broker and and having agents you know so not i'm not only just tapping into my personal experiences i'm tapping into the experiences that other people have had that i assisted you know from a brokerage standpoint right. uh, with them so we're talking about you know over thousands over at over a thousand of real estate transactions or experiences mm-hmm. um uh, really more than that because that that's just the transactions that's that's just the ones that we was able to complete right. imagine all the ones we weren't even able to complete <laughs> and you probably learned so much from those that you didn't get to the end of because you saw different challenges so absolutely, absolutely. all experience is good experience especially in this all real estate experience. game so but this is what i want the people to know rick i i agree experiential knowledge is the best knowledge period but it does not have to be your experiences. Tap into the right people. Tap into other people that's been doing it. Tap into their experiences, their knowledge base. You don't have to experience. You don't have to bump your head. You don't have to burn your hand and know that uh, the the stove is hot, right? right. You ain't you ain't got to you ain't got to punch the brick wall to know that you're gonna break your hand if you punch the brick wall. You know, look at somebody else that did it, uh, right. and then you be able to capitalize off of. Uh, the knowledge uh, or learning that knowledge and from those experiences. So, yeah, no, nah, but to answer your question, man, yeah, it's just, I, I, I'm glad I have this outlet, right? To be able to pull, pull out of, uh, to answer these questions, to prevent mm-hmm. other people from having to experience the same things that I had to experience to get to this journey. I mean, you know, uh, what we do here on Monday nights is just a, the tip of the iceberg as far as the mentorship and education that, Um, you offer at Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm. So for those in our audience who are interested in learning more about the brokerage, learning more about your mentorship program, learning more about your affiliate program, could you share with our audience, Coach Mike, how they could go about gaining that information and how they can get in contact with you and and schedule a consultation? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, So, man, we are actually, we're really easy to find, right? If you go to brooksanddavis.com, real easy to find, and you'll, you'll, you'll get to learn a lot of all the things that we offer, our secret sauce. If I had to define us, if I had to wrap us up in one word, I broke what, what separates us from everybody else, it would be, the, it would be support, right? Nobody's going to outdo us as it relates to supporting agents and agent development. We're serious about it. You know, Monday Nights, Monday Nights Live is just one, uh, one iota, like you said, Rick, of the level of development and support that we provide to our agent members. It's just a tip, you know, it's a small, it's a very small percentage, uh, mm-hmm. but it's our way to pre- to showcase to everybody that we are serious about our agent support uh, and our agent development. So if you are in the process of getting your real estate license, uh, or maybe you're with a brokerage firm and thinking of making a change, I encourage, I encourage you to visit the link shown and schedule a personal company introduction with me. Um, we're going to put that link up on there. Uh, and, and through that company introduction, you're going to be able to learn how we train, how we educate and how we support our agent members. Uh, and just like I said earlier, you know, we got Monday Night Lives, uh, but we, we are we are serious. And hopefully you can see this through what we do on Mondays. We are serious about our agent support program. Uh, and that program includes everything from one on one coaching, mentorship, 
Uh, and even for those who are not licensed yet, we have our affiliate membership uh, as well. So the support doesn't just begin when you get licensed. It even starts before you get licensed to help you just navigate uh, that process uh, to even get to the point to where you can get in the game. So, uh, again, I, I invite you schedule your in-person or online company introduction with me today uh, and we will definitely get it done. Oh, man, you know, uh, once again, I want to follow up with what you're saying, man. Check out Coach Mike. Go to brooksanddavis.com. Schedule your consultation. If anyone out there would like to see the links that we go to at Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm to not only assist our new agents in building their business, but also to promote themselves, you can check us out on Thursdays on the Prime Real Estate Network podcast. Myself and the other co-founder of Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm, Mr. Larry W. Brooks, we go live on Facebook and Instagram every Thursday at noon. New episodes debut on YouTube Sundays at 6 p.m. Go through our archive of past episodes. Make sure you subscribe, like, and share because there are so many real estate professionals, Brooks and Davis, family members who have appeared on the Prime Real Estate Network podcast and have done great things in the community and have been an invaluable resource for everyone in the great state of Texas and especially here in our city of Houston, man. So I want to invite everyone, follow us, check us out, like, subscribe, and share, man. Coach Mike. Yo. Hey, you know, it's, it's great doing this with you every week, brother. Any final words for our audience before we sign off? You know what, man? We got a couple of upcoming events that I want to make them aware of. Again, mm -hmm. like us on our Facebook business page. That is the way to stay in the loop. You know, that's our bulletin board of all the things that we have coming down the pipeline. We do about five to eight events every week. So I encourage you, follow the Facebook page so you'll stay in the loop. Uh, we have our Real to Life podcast tomorrow. Uh, one of our newest agents, Erica May, she's going to be coming in. Agent, uh, she's a, a, a realtor uh, and a financial advisor. Uh, so I'm going to be uh, interviewing her on tomorrow. Excited about that. Uh, that's going to be at 1230. We're going to be going live again on Facebook and um, uh, our YouTube channel. Also, Mastermind Through Tough Times, we do that at 230 on Tuesdays. Uh, topic, who is wearing Drake's Tuscan leather after their workout? So see what we have to <laughs> see what we, see I'm about to check that out, man. I'm about to yeah. check that out. No doubt. Check it out. Check it out. Every Tuesday at 2.30, man, we do the Mastermind Through Tough Times, just real estate professionals talking about randomness. That's all it's about. Uh, got a happy hour. Got a happy hour coming up on Thursday, uh, hosted by Mr. Mark Boudreaux and Goosehead Insurance. Uh, so be on the lookout for that, as well as we have a Lunch and Learn Realtors and Home Warranties. Uh, that's going to be on Wednesday at 12. So that's going to be on uh, Wednesday at 12 o'clock. We're bringing in a representative with Sitch Home Warranties. They're going to be talking. Uh, and in a little ways up the future, we're doing a, a huge real estate summit. Really excited about that. It's our second uh, real estate summit at the Church at Bethel's Family. It's going to be October 9th. Uh, the last one had close to 200 people. Uh, and uh, we're excited about that as well. So uh, if you're thinking about buying a house, thinking about selling a house, be on the lookout for that information about the real estate summit. That's going to be on October 9th from 9, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. So staying busy. Make sure you RSVP. You have the link there. Reserve your spots. Um, uh, if you're a licensed realtor, you can attend all our stuff. Uh, if you're not, so RSVP, you can attend it as long as you're licensed. If you're not licensed, then all you have to do is become one of our affiliate members. Uh, and our affiliate membership allows people that are not licensed to get that kind of access and, and attend our events as well. So. Uh, that's pretty much it, Rick, man. I think we got another one in the books. Hey, man, you know, um, I want to invite everyone in the audience to take advantage of these resources, take advantage of the trainings, come out to the uh, Lunch and Learn, come out to the Happy Hour. You know, that's a lot of people's two favorite words in the dictionary is Happy Hour. So everyone's invited. So on behalf of myself, Rick Davis, if you need me, you can reach me directly on Instagram at Prime Real Estate Rick. And my co-host, the co-founder of Brixton Davis Real Estate Firm, Mr. Michael G. Davis, man. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here with you this week. If you need anything in the meantime, in between time, we're only a text, call, inbox, or DM away. And until next Monday night, everyone out there, be safe and be blessed.